Have you ever wondered what the first Jewish believers in the Messiah had that allowed them to walk in such extraordinary miracles? My guest will reveal exactly what it was and how it was hijacked and how we can get it back next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. But you know, in order for it to be naturally supernatural, we have to have everything that God has intended for us. The first congregation of believers, they had it. But as time went on, many have lost it today. You see, the first believers in the Messiah went through the door of the fulfillment of Pentecost and tongues of fire came upon them and they spoke in languages they had never been taught. Glenn Orekian, uh, just to whet their appetite, tell me two or three benefits from praying in a language you've never been taught, a supernatural language from your spirit, not from your mind, that you have never been instructed. Well, first of all, tongues will bring treasure out of you. The, the Bible says we've got treasure in earthen vessels. What's the point of having treasure and you can't tap into it? When you pray in supernatural language, you will tap into this treasure and make your life better. Secondly, when you're speaking supernatural language, the scripture says, Paul said that we are speaking to God directly. We're not speaking to man, we're speaking to God. How many people all over the world would like to have an audience with God, would like to talk to God, but don't know how to talk to God? And here we have this great privilege of talking directly to God in the throne room when we pray supernatural language. And thirdly, when we pray in, in supernatural language, we are strengthening our spirit man with the might of God, the power of God. And that's what the church needs today. That's what preachers need today. We need the power of God, the anointing of God to change this world. Okay, at age 14, you had a relationship with God. Your, your, your bedroom was like a sanctuary and you would pray hours and hours in supernatural language and listen to worship music. Uh, do you remember those days? Yes, sir, I still do today. And uh, when I was 14 years old, I would pray and pray in that supernatural language called tongues. I would pray every day all hours of the day, especially if, uh, if there was no school, I would be praying all night long, all day long. And my mom and my brothers loved to come in my room because they would say it had a peaceful environment. You know, I can understand that. It really was your sanctuary, uh, but you had a relative yes. that spent the night in your room and she was not a believer in the Messiah. What happened to her? Well, she was visiting from Paris and my mother told me, said, well, Glenn, you know, you got, we got a visitor, so you're gonna have to spend uh, the night in a different room and let your cousin have this room. And we did not know that she was demon possessed. I didn't know that she wasn't saved. But about two o'clock in the morning, she ran out of that room screaming, yelling, I can't, I can't sleep in that room. I can't sleep in that room. And she was manifesting, uh, you know, <laughs> going crazy just because she couldn't sleep in that room. And in that room that was always praying supernatural language, God's presence was always there. And when there's demons and there's darkness, darkness cannot stay in the presence of God. So, so therefore, if you have the presence of God in your room, no evil can even enter there. And no evil would be dumb enough to want to enter there. That is true, because when you're praying in supernatural language, you are charging the atmosphere with the anointing of God, with the presence of God, and with the power of God. Listen, when he prayed in the supernatural language, he was prophesying his future because he heard something about his future wife. Tell me about that. When I was a teenager, I knew I was supposed to be in the ministry and I didn't want to have girlfriends after girlfriends. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know who my wife is. 
and I would be praying about it. And this man of God came and told me and said, uh, God says to you, don't worry about your wife. And I'm thinking to myself, I ain't worried. Just, <laughs> Lord, just tell me who she is. I'll just be fine. And I went to bed like I do every night, praying in the spirit. And as, and as I fell asleep praying in the spirit, I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw myself at the altar. And uh, I was about to get married. And I looked back, I could hear the rattle music. And I saw this girl coming in, but she had a veil on her face. I was like, take it off, I can see who you are. And she came and stood next to me. And as she stood next to me, I heard the audible voice of God. Your wife's name will be called Anna. Hmm. So right there and then, I just knew, I didn't have to go look for Peggy Sue or anybody else or Elizabeth. My wife's name would be Anna. And when I met my wife, I met her in church. I saw this girl, I said, what's your name? She said, my name is Rosanna. I said, well, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> but when we opened a passport on her birth certificate, her name is Anna Rose Elizabeth. God never made a mistake and he never makes mistakes. I, I'm wondering, when you go to sleep praying in supernatural languages, I believe if you've been doing this enough, the whole time you're sleeping, you're praying in supernatural sure, cause languages. Because your spirit never sleeps. Now your body needs rest, but your spirit never sleeps. And you are always in constant communion and communication with God. And that is what praying in supernatural language does. It's your, it's your development of your partnership and communion with the Holy Spirit. Now, God knows what's going to happen in your future. Yes, He does. So therefore, if you're praying a supernatural prayer from your spirit that is hooked with God's spirit, yes. that knows everything, before your problem happens, you are all, you've already prayed it through. Yes. So you really can't worry about anything if you know you've been praying perfect prayers. That's right, because when you're praying in supernatural language, you're praying the perfect will of God. Uh, the scripture says when we pray in the supernatural language, we're praying mysteries, Greek word mysterion, meaning the secret plan, meaning it's a plan hidden from the devil, but is hidden for the saints. I like that. In other words, uh, when you're praying in English, the devil knows what you're praying. Sure. When you're praying in supernatural tongues... He knows what you're doing, but he can't sabotage it. I like that. Well, you're going to find out about supernatural protection when we come back. This is so mandatory for the times that we're living in. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! What if God had a special gift for you that once received would open a door to heaven that would release unprecedented signs, wonders, and miracles into your life? Sid says you'd be Meshuggah. That's Jewish for crazy if you didn't want this gift. Glenn Arekian wants to mentor you on how to receive this supernatural gift. Call now and receive Glenn Arekian's anointed book, The Power of Praying in Tongues, plus his powerful audio CD, Your Personal Trainer for the Supernatural. Both yours for a donation of $25, shipping and handling is included. Through this book, you will learn 60 benefits of praying in the Spirit, gain direct access to the throne room of God through praying in tongues, understand that praying in the Spirit pulls you from the past into the future, increase your faith through praying in tongues, learn that speaking in tongues releases angels, understand that praying in tongues reverses death and demonic assignments, find out how praying in the Spirit is the key to revival, and so much more. Plus, you'll receive Glenn's powerfully anointed audio CD, your personal trainer for the supernatural. You'll hear 101 reasons why you need to pray in the Spirit, and Glenn will personally mentor you on how to pray in tongues. After you hear this CD, you will be supernaturally motivated to pray in tongues continually. Don't miss out on getting Glenn Arekian's anointed book, The Power of Praying in Tongues, plus his powerful audio CD, your personal trainer for the supernatural. Both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9083. Call Call, write to the address on your screen, or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural! Speaking in an unknown tongue by being filled with the Holy Spirit has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. Hello, Sid Roth here with Glenn Arekian. and Glenn, your life, my life, 
in your life, if you pr pray in supernatural languages, it's probably been spared so many times because the devil's planning an attack against you. God knows about it. You're praying against the devil. The devil doesn't even know you're praying against him because he can't understand the supernatural language. You're praying in perfect faith because, praise God, you can't understand it. So there's nothing in it. It is as perfect a prayer as you can pray. Tell me about the time you had a supernatural intervention of God in Ghana. Well, this was my first, I was 21 years old. It was my first missionary trip on mainland Africa. I went to Ivory Coast and I was preaching in Abidjan. And on my way back, I had to be in transit in uh, Ghana. And so I took the plane from Abidjan to Accra. When I got to Accra, uh, the immigration officer who met, who met us at the bottom of the stairs said, everybody on that plane is not going to London. You're all going back to Abidjan because you are all illegal immigrants. And I said, I'll hold it, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't an illegal immigrant. No, I, I said, first of all, I'm not Ivorian. I, 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 I'm a British citizen. I'm going back to London. He said, no, everybody on that plane is going back to Ivory Coast. I said, well, where, do, where do I go to? I don't know anybody over there. He said, well, then we'll take you to jail. Uh, when I heard the word jail, like, <laughs> I was all excited. I mean, I was like, no, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> I'm sure. So I began, and this man was rude, and this man was like, no, you're not going to London. And by that time, he said, beside the plane, your connection, your connection to London has already left. Your plane is already gone. Now, I knew in my mind, if, I, if something supernatural didn't happen, I'm going to jail somewhere in Africa, and I don't want to be in jail in Africa. So I didn't care. I began to pray in supernatural language. I kept praying. I, and I prayed out loud. I didn't care, because I wanted to get out of Accra to go back to London. As I, and as I prayed, I heard the voice of the Lord. I said, see that man over there? I want you to go and talk to that man. As I was heading towards that man, that, said, that other immigration officer said, where are you going? I said, I'm not talking to you. I want to see that man. He says, no, where are you going? I said, I'm not talking to you. I want to see that man. And I saw that man. I said, sir, I'm supposed to be going to London. And they want to deport me back to Ivory Coast. He came back half hour later with a brand new ticket on a different airline, which I didn't pay for, and hmm. took me back home to London. Could that have ever happened if you didn't pray mysteries in the First of all, if I didn't pray in that supernatural language, I would not know what to do. I would have hmm. panicked and be afraid and find myself in a jail. But the scripture says, with an unknown tongue, he will speak to his people. So when, the, when I prayed in unknown language, supernatural language, I heard the voice of the Lord to tell me what to do. Supernatural language will get you out of any problem that you may find yourself in. You, do you know what's been hidden? Because it's not emphasized. If you study the various moves of God's Spirit throughout history, you'll find the secret of these great men or women's power was speaking in supernatural languages. Tell me about some pillars of the church. John G. Lake, who had a great healing ministry, he said the making of his ministry is praying in supernatural language, speaking the language that God has given to him. Smith Wigglesworth, who, from the United Kingdom, who was an uneducated plumber, shy, timid, was transformed into the apostle of faith, into the apostles of miracles and healings, simply by, simply by praying in supernatural language. People like William J. Seymour, who brought about revival, the Azusa Street Revival, they all prayed in supernatural language. Our churches will be changed, our cities will be changed, our nation will change if the churches and believers begin to pray in supernatural language. Tell me about this uh, Indiana pastor's wife. This pastor had been sitting under your teaching and just so motivated to pray in supernatural languages and she dies. Was it in a service or? No, she died at home mm -hmm. and she wasn't feeling well during the day. She knew it was a demonic attack. She wasn't feeling well. 
Well, she got up and as she was heading towards the bathroom, she said she felt something hit her. And when that thing hit her, she fell down and collapsed. And her husband, who's a pastor who already speaks in supernatural language, but I only inspired him to teach you to, to, to pray even more, saw her collapse on the floor and all the color drained out of her and gurgled her last breath. Mm. She's not breathing. My wife's not breathing. But the faith of God rose on the inside of him. And he already understood by the teaching of God's word that we can pray supernatural language. So he began to pray and blast in supernatural language and she came back to life. She was resurrected. Well, resurrection of the dead. I mean, if that's not a reason to pray in a supernatural language. When we come back, Gwen is going to show you the secret from scripture of why the first believers in the Messiah had such awesome power. And it, it's such a, an amazing revelation in the English translations of the Bible. Most have missed it. But in the Greek translation of this verse he's going to show you, you're going to, light bulbs are going to go on. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! For He Himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in Himself, to create in Himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Один новый человек. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit makes a difference. You will more clearly hear God's voice. You will know what to do, and He will show up with His glory. Hello, Sid Roth here with Glenn Arekian. And Glenn, when you shared the Greek translation of one particular verse for me, I then understood the power of the first church, and I then understood how it was hijacked from us. Explain that. Well, in Acts chapter 6, when the church was growing, and there was murmuring, and they wanted the apostles to do all kinds of different works, the apostles said this, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. But the Greek text says it this way, we will give ourselves to the prayer. The word the implies definite article known to those who were saying it. So the the prayer that was prayed in the New Testament referred to praying in supernatural language. And see how the apostle said praying in supernatural was so important that they would give themselves to the prayer. And today the church has moved away from the prayer. We pray all kinds of prayer except the prayer. Well, you know, the word that speaks to me just as loud in that verse where Paul the apostle said, I pray in tongues in supernatural languages more than anyone. But what they said is they were going to pray continually. If that word means what it means in English, I don't think there's any way you can pray continually unless you pray the prayer. Supernatural language. I, I mean, when, when I listen to you teach, it causes me to uh, not be convicted, but causes me to desire yes. to pray the prayer. Yeah, well, if we go back to Paul, like you mentioned, Paul says, I pray in tongues or supernatural language more than you all. Then the scripture says in the book of Acts 19, that God, how God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul. How? Because he prayed in supernatural language. Supernatural language will, is the release of God's power. The word uh, miracles there, God did unusual miracles. The, the, the Greek text is wonder works, and that's what we want in the church. We want to see unusual miracles, wonder works, extraordinary miracles, outstanding miracles that even sinners cannot deny. Well, how do we do that? We've got to be tapping into the supernatural. 
How do you tap in the supernatural? By praying the language of God, supernatural language. People get ideas and inventions yes. from God. Tell me about someone. Well, George Washington Carver. Thank you, God. He was a man who knew the voice of God, who knew the Holy Spirit. See, when you're praying in supernatural language, you are tapping into the mind of God, tapping into the creativity of God. And in a place where he was not supposed to prosper, God gave him witty inventions. How to get and invented so many things out of peanuts. And who would have thought that you can get 300 stuff out of peanuts? Hmm. But by him simply knowing the voice of the Holy Spirit, speaking a supernatural language, believing in God, talking to God, God gave him ideas to bring in uh, inventions about peanuts. It is all about walking in the power of God. Paul says, when I came to you, I didn't come with enticing words of man's wisdom, but I came in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. And there, there is a connection between the supernatural, extraordinary miracles and praying in supernatural language. You cannot separate the healing ministry from supernatural language. The moment you begin to pray in supernatural language, it opens you up to the nine gifts of the Spirit. It opens you up. You know what I notice? When I'm around you, I can feel the presence of God. Is it because you spend so much time developing your spirit, yes. praying in supernatural yes. language? Yes. When you, you, when you spend time praying in the spirit, you carry the anointing. You become a vessel that carries that anointing of God. But you know, anyone can do that. Anybody. Anyone can do that. I believe the difference between these great men and women of God that Glenn was talking about was their prayer life. Praying continually in the prayer, supernatural languages. I, 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 I believe that all the people you just mentioned and many others never would have had the ministry they had if they didn't pray in tongues. Because if you don't pray in a supernatural language, you don't have a, a supernatural edge. Praying in unknown tongue or supernatural language gives you an edge over the natural because it makes you supernatural. So that's the reason why we must pray in supernatural language. You know what I believe? I believe that if you will pray in your supernatural language, God is going to speak through you to some people right now. Would you do that? Yes. Hallelujah. Kito mbroko sete lebron kateshe ne borian de rese teke lebonte brekata na bosonte. Hallelujah. Right now there's somebody watching me and you've, you're blind in one eye and God is saying to you right now, it's open. It's open. There's somebody right now who's got lung cancer and the doctor has given up on you and told you you've only got weeks to live. You don't have long, and you've made preparation for your funeral, but God is saying you are healed right now. Supernatural healing power of God is going through your body right now and healing you from that lung cancer. You know what's so wonderful, Glenn? Not that you were able to be used by God right now, but that everyone that is watching us right now can be used by God as much as Glenn is used by God, as much as I am used by God. But Glenn, the flesh doesn't like praying no. in supernatural languages. But what happens when you pray for hours, which you do, and you eventually get into the spirit realm? What is that like? Explain that. Everything becomes easy. There's nothing impossible. The moment you begin to get into the realm of the spirit where God is, you begin to think like God and you understand that God is omnipotent, that God is all powerful. And once you begin to be in the same room and same realm with him, there's nothing that you can't do. Whatever dream, whatever vision that God has given you becomes easy. You don't know how you're going to do it, but you know it's going to happen. Why? Because you have access to the power of God and everything which is complicated becomes easy. It's no longer a complicated issue because you have the mind of Christ. If you would like to be filled with God's Holy Spirit right now and speak in supernatural languages, you are a candidate because God's not a respecter of persons 
as long as your sins are forgiven, you've repented of your sins, and you have asked Jesus to live inside of you and be your Lord. If you have done that and meant that, then you could just lift your holy, because they're under the blood of Jesus, you could lift your holy hands to God right now, and you could say, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord. And then by faith, you could start speaking your language right this second. You say, I don't know what to say. Perfect. It's not from your mind. It's from your spirit. But you cannot speak in English without making sounds. If you, by faith, will begin to tell God how much you love Him, that's what happens when you pray in supernatural languages. You're telling God how much you love Him. Remember, you've always prayed in the name of Jesus to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is going to give you the words if you will just speak it out. Do that right now. Uvele anyo mata breda, breda breda baba ha. If you don't move your mouth, no one else will do it. If you don't speak right now, speak in your supernatural language. Ikana maha sabahe bhiti ali abha bhiti abha. Ove hebini abha. What if God had a special gift for you that once received would open a door to heaven that would release unprecedented signs, wonders, and miracles into your life? Sid says you'd be Meshuggah. That's Jewish for crazy if you didn't want this gift. Glenn Arekian wants to mentor you on how to receive this supernatural gift. Call now and receive Glenn Arekian's anointed book, The Power of Praying in Tongues, plus his powerful audio CD, Your Personal Trainer for the Supernatural. Both yours for a donation of $25, shipping and handling is included. Through this book, you will learn 60 benefits of praying in the Spirit, gain direct access to the throne room of God through praying in tongues, understand that praying in the Spirit pulls you from the past into the future, increase your faith through praying in tongues, learn that speaking in tongues releases angels, understand that praying in tongues reverses death and demonic assignments, find out how praying in the Spirit is the key to revival, and so much more. Plus, you'll receive Glenn's powerfully anointed audio CD, your personal trainer for the supernatural. You'll hear 101 reasons why you need to pray in the Spirit, and Glenn will personally mentor you on how to pray in tongues. After you hear this CD, you will be supernaturally motivated to pray in tongues continually. Don't miss out on getting Glenn Arekian's anointed book, The Power of Praying in Tongues, plus his powerful audio CD, your personal trainer for the supernatural. Both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9083. Call, write to the address on your screen, or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, you're about to meet people who literally died and went to heaven. You're going to be amazed at their eyewitness guided tour. 